is worrying, though, is if you have a generation of kids growing up with this kind of forced representation in games and they get used to only identifying with people and characters that look exactly like them, they're going to think that this is normal and they're going to struggle to be able to look at things from a different perspective. Thanks to Bound Again in Comics for this story, Microsoft has published new a new inclusion guide for video game developers recommending against creating female characters with, quote, exaggerated body proportions. So here we are. We're back at it again as there's a product inclusion guide for video game developers um, that notably suggests that creators completely abstain from depicting any sexualized or, quote, unrealistic female characters within their works. This is where we're at now. This is where we're at. Microsoft is the cancer trying to take my titties. Here is the... Uh, Wonderful things that came out of GDC made public on March 20th as part of the company's appearance at the at the 2024 Game Developers Conference. The Microsoft's new gaming for every product inclusion framework calls on developers to actively consider four specific areas when creating a new title. Those being approachability, which ensures all players uh, existing and new experience and novel feel safe and welcome. What the fuck, the fuck does that even mean? That's so design. stupid! I don't need to feel safe and welcome when I play a video game, I want to have fun! <laughs> Representation is about reflecting the diversity of the player and creator community, so everyone can feel that they belong. Kirsha, you, you, you've been nailing this with Bridge over here, huh? We're, we're yeah, I, I hate the response where it's just like, oh, the gamers are finally going mask off, saying they don't want diversity in their games, and it's like, well... When you've been using the word diversity for years to mean literally less white people and not actual diversity, what do you expect when people are finally against it? Like, your subversive language can only get you so far if enough people notice what you're talking about. I've said this a million times, and I can't state this enough. Nobody cares if there's a black guy in the character, if there's a wheelchair character, if, uh, if there is a... Uh, if you're deaf, if you're blind, if you're trans, nobody cares. Nobody cares. Just make it fun to play. Just make it fun to play. And there was it. a, there was, I think it was a Dual Shockers article that I, I quoted earlier, but they were just like, we need another playable character in the, in the Final Fantasy series that's black that's not just for comic relief. And I never played Final Fantasy 13, but they used uh, the, the black guy in that as an example, and they used Barrett as an example. And I was like, well, first of all, Barrett isn't comic relief. Like, you literally have Kate Sith in the same game as Barrett. He's a fleshed out character who has a backstory, who has a lot of dialogue. Like, I, what are you talking about? And in addition to that, did everybody just forget about Fran? Did, did everybody forget that Fran exists <laughs> in Final Fantasy? She was like one of the most badass female characters in one of the later Final Fantasy games. Please, please, come on. Look, nobody can play every game. That's impossible. Right? Yeah, but if you're going to write an article on something, you should at least know what you're talking about. Right. 100%. 100%. Let's continue their stuff. Uh, globalization is about making global players feel, feel at home and ensuring that their experience has local relevance and respect. Oh, okay. That one feels specifically targeted as like how Westerners are trying to colonize Japanese games and make them less Japanese. Man, yeah, it's like hold a mirror up, you know, it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, except, and accessibility is about making games and experience playable for people with disabilities and striving to make products, uh, products accessible by design from the ground up. When you hear about the, you know, the, the globalization effort across thing of tearing down borders and we're all going to be under one government and blah, blah, blah. Like, it's, they're literally saying it in these games. Like, they want, globalization is about making global players feel at home like we're it's it's so insane a game like street fighter 2 could not be made today street fighter 2 was filled with stereotypes that's all that game is is stereotypes and that game could not be made today and i think the only reason why some of those characters are are, are allowed to be exist today is that maybe they're just grandfathered in it's it's just insane to me in service of promoting these values, Microsoft also released a product inclusion guide for developers to follow in order to keep their titles uh, su uh, sufficiently progressive and unoffensive. I would argue those are these 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 two words don't go together. Yeah, they, that's like an oxymoron. <laughs> right. 
it's impossible to put those words together because I think and that, having that... having the product inclusion action again it, it harkens to what Bridge has been saying needs to be done with DEI where it needs to be embedded in the company and everything you do equity of the product equity of availability and equity of the pricing we haven't quite gotten to equity of the pricing yet but. I mean, they're, they're doing everything else. Having your story told in a universal human need uh, is a universal human need. Really? This is a universal, having your story, like this is like such, let's break down this sentence. What a, what a bunch of corporate gobbledygook. Having your story told is a universal human need. Okay. They're targeting uh, those people who played Forspoken and saw that the main character in Forspoken also prioritized collecting shoes over spending money on other things that she was, you know, she complained about having no money. And they're like, that's literally me, for real, for real. <laughs> for real, for real, it is. But for, for many in marginalized communities or in markets outside the U.S., it's rare to be represented in media, let alone games. And as a result, some people feel like a secondary consumer for our content. See, right. there it is again. Yep. Or in markets outside of the U.S. What is the market outside of the U.S. that has a large stake in gaming? The Japanese market, the Korean market. They want to transform these things to be more like the Western games market. 80% of media consumed by the world is created in the U.S. Yet most media, including video games, don't contain characters uh, and, content and content that align with the broader, with the broad consumer. Uh, so there we are. And uh, we are, Jesus Louise. Are you are you reinforcing negative gender stereotypes, right? So like, will we ever see a woman make a cake again, right? Uh, will we ever, you know, like, is a man being masculine? Is that a negative gender stereotype? So what percent of screen time on screen presence speaking lines heroes is held by different gender racial identities? That is crazy. Who actually does the time and you're like, aha, that was five seconds. Hit the timer and try again. Like, oh, my God. All yeah, right. that, that was like in, in my in my tweet again earlier when I mentioned Fran, I also brought up Balfir and like, yeah, Balfir could be Mediterranean. He could be a Spaniard instead, but it's like. To me, Balthier was Balthier. He was just a tan guy, right? Like, I didn't, I didn't try to ascribe a specific ethnicity to him. I was, I just like, I wasn't looking at him as representation. I was like, I like the character. He's well written. All right. So Microsoft has presented developers with a set of ten questions to consider when it came to their projects in order to ensure they were properly inclusive. Are you telling new stories and sh or sharing new perspectives within the product experience? I'm gonna. Break that down for you. No, no one is sharing a new story. All stories have been told forever, and we're just retelling all, all new stories. Like or almost everything is a remake. And like when when they try to be like, oh, when we when we go and make our own games, you still get angry. And it's like, well, you're not making your own games. You're you're co-opting old IPs and ruining them. Mm -hmm. Do all your characters slash player uh, depictions look the same? So it's saying, are they all white? <laughs> Well, That's it's funny because now they're making all these characters look androgynous. So, yes, they all look the same now because of you. <laughs> yes, yeah, they were removing any kind of feminine characteristics from the female body types. Right. And, okay, realistic question. If there's a group of, uh, let's just say, Latin characters, right, are they just going to throw a random wheelchair character in the middle of that or a random white guy in the middle of that just because, right? Once again, what does this add to the story? Nothing. Uh, what steps have you taken to ensure characters are represented respectfully and authentically? Mm. Authentically, according to Microsoft? According to who? Yeah, are um, they historians? Do they have historians on their team saying, yes, this is actually historically accurate? Are they just pulling shit out of their ass? <laughs> of course they're pulling shit out of their ass. Uh, have you validated a sum... God. Just validate. That's all. This is. We live in a society that is so stuck up its own ass with peppers. Uh, it's it's crazy. <laughs> uh, how uh, how have you validated assumptions you have made about your audience to check for blind spots or unintended stereotypes? Oh, man, the the slippery slope. It's just. And these are things like developers shouldn't have to worry about. They shouldn't be worried about offending some like random freak on Twitter. They should be worried about making a good game that is fun that people will want to buy. No, they need to worry about unintended stereotypes. That's what they need to worry about. Would mm -hmm. you feel proud to show a member of a community how their culture slash character is depicted within your experience? 
<laughs> Jesus, that's, it's crazy. Uh, how are the wide range of consumers depicted within your products, content, por con content portfolio, and communications? Uh, what, what process have you used to validate how different groups of people or cultures are represented in your experience? I think uh, what's what interesting here is that they're assuming that you have to have the customers represented in your product, which you don't. Yes, you no know, abs. Uh, what is the whole idea? Like the whole idea of video games is escapism for a lot of people, not being themselves, being able to do things that they've never, never done before. What are we doing? Like, like if I'm able to play a game where the main character is like a, a dude who turns into a demon and fights with his talking dog and German soldier lady friend, I can enjoy their story without having to self insert. We had that other question about the what percentage of screen time is held by different gender slash racial identities. Uh, do you have a process to review key decisions in the lens of helping customers feel seen? I, I, I'm gonna, just going to go on a limb here. Every single one of these was made by some lady, some like white lady in like Washington or Portland who went down the list and was like, these are all really important issues we need to discuss today. What is, what is worrying though is if you have a generation of kids growing up with this kind of forced representation in games and they get used to only identifying with people and characters that look exactly like them, they're going to think that this is normal and they're going to struggle to be able to look at things from a different perspective. And this is part of how they're going to be creating a new consumer base where the people are going to be growing up with DEI as just a part of their everyday life. It's going to be normal for them and they're not going to think about it as something weird or shoehorned in. I was fortunate, right? I was very fortunate in that I, uh, you know, I grew up with a big group of friends that were of all races, you know, that, that were black, white, I'm sure I had some gay friends in there. Uh, I had some Muslim friends. I had Mexican friends. And we never thought about any of this bullshit. Never. Yeah. Like, that's the thing that these people are missing out on. They're in, they're in these these bubbles, and they feel like it has to be forced. And it's it's just insane. Yeah, this that's like I was saying earlier. Like, when I was playing my games, I didn't be like, oh, that's a white guy. That's a black guy. That's an Indian woman. Uh, that's, a, that's a, like, Native American woman. I was just like, oh, that's a really cool character design. I like this character. Like, I, I wasn't concerned about their skin tone. I was like, is it an interesting character? 